Well, yes, I might be fixated on clouds. Hi, everybody. This is Marion Stroh, the inappropriate artist here in voiceover form. I am in the midst of working on a commission with this painting and working out this cloud. I have been practicing recreating as much as possible the actual clouds that I am seeing. And in this case, you'll see how I maneuver my way. So I, the background is always completely covered when I work on clouds. And because gouache is able to be reactivated, all I have to do is plot in with my permanent white where I want my edges and highlights to be. And then I can reactivate the gouache beneath those blues to start to work in the shadow. And I decided shortly here after that I wanted to outline a little bit more darkly this almost rain cloud that wants to happen, right? <laughs> a rain cloud that wants to grow bigger. And I am enjoying the blending here. I find that this round number 12, I think it is, um, by the Sarah Burns Studio gouache brushes by Craftamo is really wonderful for this kind of cloud work. I am putting in some highlights you can see. I keep, you know, there's a drawing shift, right? So lights dry darker and darks dry lighter. Oh, and now I think I need a break. Time to go for a drive. I made a decision today to go out on the road and go up toward Angle. This is the road to Angle. And I just passed a road that says the Point of Rocks is behind me. I do kind of want to go check that out too. But I know this road tees off, but look how beautiful. Fra Cristobal Mountains. This is a little bit closer than I've gotten to take before and it's got such beautiful light on it right now. Ah! Yes, I took a picture. Yes, I'm pulled over on a road that has no shoulder. I don't care. There's nobody coming. Ah, <laughs> uh, beautiful. I'm so glad I decided to do this today. There's a bit of cloud cover, so I knew I wasn't going to have to run my air conditioner, um, which makes difference ah, in affording a little bit of a wander today. Oh, wow, how pretty. I want to go up there so badly. Ugh. There are tours, but they're expensive. You know, they're like 350 bucks, I think. Oh, I can see the town from here. <laughs> wow. Wow. Whoa. Uh, it's not fair. There should be like special dispensation for landscape painters. Right? Discount prices. Discount prices because we are capturing the landscape as it is in this moment. Right? <sighs> Preserving it as it is today. Yeah. We should get we should get points for that. I'm sure I'm sure the universe makes will make sure that those of us who love this beauty so genuinely um and feel it. I think we be rewarded for it. I mean, I'm. I feel like I am being rewarded for it with with how I get to capture it on paper. 
Oh, it's so gorgeous. I just don't even know how to. You want to get closer. I wonder how far I go before I see no trespassing signs. I don't know. I never made left up here. I just turned around last time. Okay, so I am trespassing a little bit, but not that much. I only came down the road a little bit, and there's another fence gate area, and I'm not going to go beyond that, because then I will feel bad. But... I'm going to take a picture of the mountains from here. The light is perfect at this hour. You've got some cloud cover. Not too much, but enough to make it so it's not, like, really glary. So perfect. And the railroad tracks give me a nice breadth of distance. How cool. All right, let me show you what I'm saying. This is where I am. So that is Monticello in the far distance. Oh. And these are the Fra Cristobal. Look at that gorgeous. Look at it. It's so beautiful. I believe that is the Caballo Range. Bio. Caballo, right? Not sure which one. Uh, turtle is over this way, but it's in the shadows, so it's hard to notice. Take the next left onto Divide Well Road. Oh. Okay, so I just did a little reevaluation. Um, this is going to take 29 minutes out so far right but it's a washboard road which means probably add another half hour it's about an hour if i turn around there was a y that took me closer to the caballo range and when i looked at the satellite map the road looks kind of interesting like it gets a little closer to the mountain yeah so that i think i'm gonna check that out because that looks a little bit more easy access and so that is the Caballo Range, and I would rather, I think, head in that direction. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where this road takes us. I just drove into this little grove. Look at this cute little grove. Joshua trees. I know. I found, I, if, shocked me. I mean, they're a little different than the ones I'm used to seeing. They're just another kind of yucca. But yeah, another kind of, uh, you know, there's so many varieties. And at the different elevations, they all look a little bit different. Yeah, but it was kind of neat. I had, I said it to a friend of mine. I was like, are those Joshua trees I'm saying? She's like, yeah. It's like, yeah, but that's only at a certain elevation. She's like, uh, yeah, and you're at it. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. I, I wasn't thinking. But Joshua Tree National Park is not the only place you can find Joshua Tree. Oh, we have a split road up ahead. And I kind of want to see, maybe I should check the map. What was that? This almost looks like a driveway. Yeah. So this is what I'm looking at. I got this road on my right, and then this is going straight. Curious? I'm curious. So I just pulled up the map, and this is called John Huke. I don't know, it's a historical landmark, so I'm going to check it out, see what it's all about. And this is the approach. The road is actually not bad. I was a little worried at first, because there was rain recently, so, you know, stuff like this gets...
gets washed out easily. So the road kind of turned to crap. So I turned off the engine and thought I would get out and take a little look around. I doubt highly they're going to consider me blocking the road. I'm not appropriately shooed, so I am not going to go very far, but I do want to go to the crest of the hill to see. Um, and I've done worse roads than this, to be honest with you. But this is all black volcanic rock, which is hot. And uh, I've been driving around. And my tires might be hotter than I realize. I don't want to do damage. And it doesn't look like the road gets any better. <laughs> but what a cool spot. <gasps> oh, look at the Frocker Stowball Mountains from here. Beautiful. This was a good choice. <laughs> so I can see that it goes up further, probably to the crest. I'm not going to go all the way right now. But look at that. Wow. Yeah, because I'm by myself. So. Toot. Wow. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Oh, they're gorgeous. I really wish I had a 4x4 vehicle to get up this. I mean, I probably could, considering what I did in Moab. I just didn't tell anybody where I am. and You know, it's one of those things. Uh, well, I've been bolder, but also the van was in better shape, <laughs> and I've been dealing with some issues that I just don't want to suddenly have to deal with on this road. This would make a great sunrise location, I think. Sunrise, sunset, both. For sure, and it's really not that far out of town. I would want to get to the top. So I just pinned a camp spot for a friend. I saw a fire ring and a pull off and thought, well, what the heck? Why not? <clears throat> well, this is a fun little adventure. Hey now, I haven't done a whole lot of driving around, but I haven't wanted to waste my gas either. This wasn't too far and I needed it. I needed to wander. And that's the back side of the turtle, my friends. Yeah, not as impressive from this angle for sure. But look at this gorgeous view. What? There's Monticello in the distance. And I believe that's Elephant Butte. I like the vast landscape view up here. It's giving me some ideas. Ah, sometimes getting out and doing that really makes all the difference. I was able to get back to work in the studio, and that wonderful cloud sky inspired me to put in all my tiny little distant clouds along the horizon. I really enjoy the meditative process that comes with doing clouds. Honestly, I have a friend who only paints clouds, and I have seriously considered it myself. Maybe someday when I am finished with my project, I can just get lost in the clouds. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Getting lost in the clouds. Mm. Well, you, as you can see, doing more outlining of a new cloud, creating structure and movement, and enjoying just layering in all of my whites, getting them to try to pop. And I do 
take my time in this process because less is more. And I find that if I just put on a little at a time, I can grow the cloud as if it's growing in the sky. I find that it comes out feeling much more natural in its appearance when I do it this way. I love these brushes. They really are some of the best brushes I've ever worked with. So Sarah Burns, gouache artist, you guys have heard me mention her many, many times. She has a channel, Sarah Burns Studio. She does wonderful tutorials. I don't consider what I do tutorials. I'm just sharing with you my process a little bit at a time as I go. I don't have the setup. She's got a wonderful setup, multiple cameras. She's tech savvy so she knows all the programs i'm not i use my phone this is all i have and this is all i'm capable of working with right now because i just don't have enough spoons to try to learn something else right now while doing all of this well here is my sky all fini and now we'll move on to the foreground and you can see that i've pulled out one of my flats and this one, I think, oh, you know what? That first one I was using was my smaller flat. That was the one and a quarter inch. And this one is my three eighth inch, I believe. Yes. I do love my flats. They're so wonderful. Get so much accomplished. And, you know, she does this wonderful job of making them absorbent and yet they have stability to them so they're stiff and flexible all at the same time it's absolutely wonderful and they don't suck up too much water so i can really control the water and with gouache you know i have the ability to work with it in a more uh, opaque fashion where it works a lot like an oil. However, I do have to consider that it is an opaque watercolor, and watercolor does have a mind of its own. And what I love about these brushes is they help me to control that crazy watercolor mind. And now just putting in my foliage outline for the tree. And now putting in the rest of this trunk. You'll see that I will switch very shortly to photographs because I had to turn off the camera. It has been giving me anxiety filming and painting at the same time. And this progression of photographs shows you the slow build of the foreground. I really thank you for joining me today and supporting my channel and supporting my journey. I could not be doing any of this without you. Honestly, I don't have enough spoons to hold the job right now, so art sales are what I have. I'm grateful for the commissions I get. If you're interested, check out my Instagram and my photography. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Ooh, like, subscribe, and check out my links to Patreon. Bye!